on a little car find a few weeks ago. A friend of mine hit me up, and uh, he's a Mustang parts collector and seller. And he said uh, he had a couple fastbacks. And like I tell everybody, if you got a fastback, I'll buy it if it makes any sense at all. So um, anyway, we went out and looked at them out almost to Poetry, Texas, kind of out past Roy City. And uh, anyway, went out and looked at them, saw this one. This one was sitting in a barn. Um, it's a 65 fastback 2 plus 2. Um, other car 68 fastback that had just been painted. Still a, just a shell sitting on a cart. So that one will have to get, you know, some suspension under it rolling or we may end up building it and selling it. But either way, they're for sale like they said or we may do something, try to get this one running here in the next few weeks. If so, we'll follow up with that. It'd be kind of cool to drive this thing all crusty down the road. But um, it, it'll need some work. It's got a little, few little issues. Straight six cylinder car, uh, four lug package. It's automatic. It's so it's drivetrain wise, it's not anything special or highly sought after, but it's still a fastback. Pretty clean interior. It's not totally correct. It's got a few little, uh, you know, pony interior stuff, which is not correct for it. But um, it smells like it's been parked for 20 years. It's been parked. I, yeah. We didn't know how long. I, somebody said 20, somebody said 9, but I'm, I'm betting 20. But overall, it's not a complete pile. It's not a rust bucket. It's uh, still a fastback. And if you come over here, check this side out. Do a little Mustang history for the day. So in 65 or 6, you could get what's called a 2 plus 2. That was a fastback only situation. And if you look at the back of that car, you'll see that there's almost no seat right now. It's just flat. Well, it's got the fold down seat. In 66, I believe that became an option. 65 it was pretty standard. But you can look in here and you'll see in the back under this glass, that's actually your seat and it's folded down. So you take this thing, flip it up and it latches in and you've got a back seat. So two people here plus two people in the back. That's what that was all about. So a little, in case you didn't know what it meant, that's what the 2 plus 2 stands for. And like I said, that, that wasn't even an option this year. I believe every one of these had that fold down seat, so it's just kind of how they came. I think I'm going to sell this thing to Doug. He'll buy anything if it's yellow. Yeah, as long as it doesn't run. Yeah, and it's yellow. But this one, uh, so this is the 68 Fastback. Um, it's sitting on a cart, so boy, that was a lot of fun. We had. Had a few people, had to winch it up on the open trailer, drag it out to the street. This thing was buried in the woods, man, I mean deep. So hauled it out there, backed up the other trailer to this one, pushed this car in and strapped it, then drove back in and got the, the blue car. So it was, a, it was a busy morning and it was snowing of all things. But uh, this one's a original yellow car. I think it's a small block car. Uh, nothing fancy. It's not an S-coat or anything cool, but it's it's painted and the paint and body's pretty decent. They've already done under the hood. I mean, it's dusty, but you can tell whoever did it did a pretty decent job. So um, it could make somebody a really nice driver. It's not quite on the level of what we build, you know, if we go all in, but it's the paint and body works good enough that I think put together this thing would really present well, and it's a pretty rare color. You don't see this very often, so but those hinges need some oil on them. It's gonna bend that hood. But anyway, they're both gonna be for sale. I've got enough stuff to just about build this whole car. You can see all the trim that came with it. I've got containers full of stuff for this car that came with it. Um, I've even got a full drivetrain in another Mustang that we're gonna replace with a Coyote. So this car could be bought, built, buy it as is, buy it with my extra parts. You know, we could make it rolling and steer. That would be the, you know, then it'd be easier to handle because I'm keeping that cart that's under there. It fits too good, so I'm, that's got to stay here. But uh, anyway, that was our find for the week. Maybe we'll find something something else cool this week that that we can show you. But we've had a five. This makes five fastbacks so far this year. I haven't bought five fastbacks in the last four years, and in a month and two weeks, we're on our fifth fifth car. So pretty crazy. Like I said, you got a problem, but I support it. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a quarter. I'm a collector. This is a. This was the third fastback of the year. This one is kind of rare. It's a S code 68. It's got a few. Uh, so yeah, on a 68, they put the VIN number on both sides, but the fender actually covers it. The fender comes to here, 
on a 67, you'll see it through here, that 65 or 6. So don't, don't be scared if you ever go look at a car and you don't see the VIN number up here. It doesn't necessarily mean it's been cut off, but it's going to be under the fender. So you've actually got to get the fender back. The other place on this, of course, there's always the door tag, but that's always easily interchangeable. So there's one other place um, is the dash tag. This car is actually, we haven't found it yet. It's supposedly with the parts, but there is one that sticks up in front of the dash on the passenger side. Now that's 1968, and I believe after that, 6970 also had it on the dash. But um, those are just some areas. Ford wasn't great about stamping the VIN. You know, Camaro, sometimes they hit them up under the cowl. Um, nobody knew they were there, but if you're looking, you can find it. Um, but they did stamp them on the front aprons. But as you know, every freaking Mustang from back in the day got wrecked. So a lot of that stuff got cut off or hacked up or smoothed out. And so it's, they're not always there. So you kind of want to learn the history on the car, you know, especially if it's a big money car before you pull the trigger on it. But it's uh, anyway, it's a good solid car. I think I think we're building another. Uh, this will be the third. I don't want to use the word, but a GT 500 E, if you know the movie Gone in 60 Seconds. Uh, it'll be one of those. It's going to have an old school uh, Windsor in it. I'm going to build him up like a 427 with stack injection. We just did one of those a couple years ago. Uh, he wants it to, to sound like it's rowdy. So the other two are getting uh, Coyote with a supercharger. And uh, one of them's getting the new GT500 engine, the, the one Ford just released. So that one will be cool. But, uh, but anyway, it's, it's old. It's getting a new, uh, probably a whole left quarter panel. It's pretty hammered. But other than that, it's solid. It's not a rusty car at all. This car, I'll tell you what else is cool, man. You gotta check this out. Get a, get a picture of this. The, what's crazy is this car was sold originally at Myers Courtesy Ford here in Garland. So any of you old timers from this area know that was, you know, like where Prestige is in that area now, Garland Road, that was, that was the Ford dealer back then. So every now and then we'll see a Myers Courtesy roll through here and we know it was born in Garland. So that's always cool. But this one, I guess, got sold later on at Buckner Auto. So it's it's been around Texas its whole life. We picked it up south of Fort Worth. And the cool thing, a lot of times on stuff like that, you kind of get the story. So the guy that we bought it from, he knew the original owner, and he knew that he had hit a tree, and that's why the front end screwed up. And then he knew that a tire exploded here, and that's why that screwed up. So you get a little history on the car, uh, kind of so you know what you're addressing, you know what I mean, as far as damage or whatever else. because. A lot of these cars, man, they've been, you know, they've been worked on for 50 years and by a bunch of hacks. And so anyway, it'll make a good one. It'll take a little while, but we get it there.